Uh, hello again, everybody. Can you hear me? Good morning again. Um, I'd, like to, uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker now. Um, Mike Lamock is the chairman and CEO of Ingersoll Rand. And he was elected chairman in, two, in June of 2010 and had prior to that been named CEO in February of uh, 2010. Um, but he's been with the company for, for well longer than that. He joined in 2004 as president of the security technology sector and in 2008 became president of Train Commercial Systems after the, uh, after the acquisition of that company. And uh, Mike and his family live in the Lake Norman area here, uh, which is north of Charlotte, so he's of course quite familiar with the area that many of us this week are just, uh, just getting to know in a lot of ways. Um, and so, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get things started and I'll turn things, over to, uh, I'll turn things over to Mike. Thanks so much. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, we're learning how to, uh, how to walk Charlotte uh, this morning, I think. Uh, we haven't seen the city, I think, this shut down in a while. Uh, I want to thank you, uh, Ben. Thanks to the Hill for your partnership. I also want to recognize the U.S. Green Building Coalition, the International Facility Management Association, and the ECHO Foundation for their part in this morning's event. It's an honor for Ingersoll Rand. It's a, a privilege for me to welcome and address all of you this morning. Uh, Ingersoll Rand has been manufacturing and providing solutions to advance the quality of life for over 140 years. And during that time, we've contributed to many uh, historic wonders, including the construction of the Panama Canal, Mount Rushmore, the Hoover Dam, the Channel, China's Three Gorges Dam, and even the new Yankee Stadium. Ingersoll Rand is proud to have more than 1,600 employees in the Charlotte area, with our corporate center in North American headquarters just 20 miles north of here in Davidson. So on behalf of Ingersoll Rand, welcome to Charlotte. I want to take a few minutes this morning to talk with you on a topic that's central to our company's mission, and I hope very important to you. It's the role of energy efficiency in creating sustainable buildings and cities. At Ingersoll Rand, energy efficiency is vitally important to our customers and to our business. Our mission is to advance the quality of life by creating and sustaining safe, comfortable, and efficient environments. We're a global business committed to sustainable business practices within our company, and for our customers. Our products and solutions enhance the quality and comfort of air in homes and buildings, transport and protect food and perishables, we secure homes and commercial properties, and increase industrial productivity and efficiency. Many of you will listen to President Obama give his acceptance address this week at the Bank of America Stadium. That building is a great example of Ingersoll Rand at work. It has club cars, Schlage locks, steel craft doors, and train systems all in our family of brands. Our family and brands includes club car, golf cars, and utility vehicles, and we're actually the largest electric vehicle producer in the world. Ingersoll ran tools, air compressors, material handling, and fluid management systems. Schlage, which offers both residential and commercial security. Thermoking, which provides global refrigeration transport, trained commercial and residential HVAC systems, and dozens of other brands that improve the quality of life in the United States and around the world. These products and solutions also help address the challenges posed by constrained resources in an increasingly populated world. That's why I want to spend a few minutes with you on this morning. I was recently reminded of the magnitude of the opportunity we have when it comes to energy efficiency. ITR Economics, a world-renowned economist firm, spoke about recession-resistant industries with our Ingersoll Rand leaders a few weeks ago. Energy was number one on their list, reminding me of the powerful opportunity that we have for industry and government to tackle this issue together. President Obama also recognizes how critical energy efficiency is to future American competitiveness. His recent executive order seeks to improve industrial energy efficiency to save American manufacturers $100 billion over the next decade. Our discussion this morning centers on the role that high-performing buildings can play in solving energy constraints and creating a more sustainable world. Consider this. By 2025, our global cities will need to add over 27,200 square miles of new urban, residential, and commercial space. That's enough floor space to completely cover the state of West Virginia. That's sobering when you realize that buildings are the single largest energy consuming sector. In total, residential and commercial buildings account for 41% of 
of the total U.S. energy consumption and 40 percent of the total U.S. US greenhouse gas emissions. Focusing on buildings to significantly reduce consumption just makes sense. They are the first line of defense for a stronger energy infrastructure, and they are a means to help businesses maximize limited resources. Making our current and future building infrastructure more efficient provides the most immediate and tangible return on investment. It gives businesses more capital to invest in growth and innovation and to create new jobs. Businesses need your support and policies to support this goal. I want to highlight three tools policymakers can use to make buildings more efficient. And they have to be combined to maximize benefits and to limit drawbacks. I want to encourage everyone here to learn about the leverage that these tools can make for us and have an impact on energy usage uh, across the world. First, building codes. Building codes are an important tool for policymakers to ensure the construction industry focuses on energy efficiency. However, codes do not address the critical energy challenges of existing buildings. Focusing on energy efficiency only in new buildings ignores the vast majority of the built environment. Second, there are energy savings performance contracts. Essentially, an energy services provider guarantees that a customer will save a certain percentage of energy costs. Should the savings not materialize, the provider pays the difference. This has been successful, and since 1990, 85% of all public and institutional projects have met or exceeded the guaranteed savings. And finally, there's the tool of transparency. And this is where continuous monitoring of energy performance of buildings is critically important to realizing energy reductions. An increasingly po uh, popular policy option adopted by a number of cities and states requires the benchmarking and disclosure of energy use in commercial buildings. My challenge to all of us, policymakers, businesses, and non-government organizations, is to focus on combining these tools to make a difference. And for policymakers considering whether they should spend their time on such policies, constituents want and expect you to act. A recent Associated Press survey revealed that energy ranked number four among the issues provided ahead of even the federal deficit. As I close, I want to emphasize that energy efficiency is an important issue and represents a real opportunity to the public, to policymakers, and to all of us in Ingersoll Rand. There are those who might say that we, can, we can't make a difference now. We have to wait for future technology. Well, we do not have to do that. Companies like Ingersoll Rand have technologies available right now today to help us meet the challenge of energy efficiency. It's a myth that we need to wait for new or emerging technologies to improve energy efficiency. We can use building intelligence to gain greater insight into building operations. Building owners can then make smarter decisions about energy usage and about security. We do this at Ingersoll Rand. Just this summer, our train building in La Crosse, Wisconsin, earned two green globes from the Green Building Initiative. And we're proud to have an industry leadership position in LEED certified engineers with more than 750 worldwide. As you look around your table, we've highlighted many examples of our customers that have improved energy efficiency in their buildings. The bottom line is that making an impact on energy efficiency is a critical priority, and it's something that each of us can affect. So thank you for your attention this morning.